if you have paid attention to the news, then you probably heard of the coronavirus from China. The Chinese coronavirus from Wuhan has already captured over 100 deaths and up to 5,000 people infected. However, these numbers are reported to be 10 times less than in reality. The symptoms include a dry cough and a fever, but people can remain asymptomatic, unaware that they can spread the disease. I didn't really want to make this video, but I got asked about this question quite a lot on social media. So, will autophagy protect against coronavirus? As a disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a virus expert, and I think that no one really knows the exact answer to that question. But I'm just going to, in this video, I'm just going to go through some of the research about how autophagy has been involved in protecting against different bacteria and different infections and whether or not it's going to work against coronavirus. Coronaviruses are a group of viruses that cause respiratory infections similar to the common cold and pneumonia. In more severe cases, it can cause severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS. The name is derived from the Latin corona, meaning crown or halo, to describe the characteristic crown-like look of the virus. This particular virus is called the 2019 novel coronavirus, or the Wuhan coronavirus. It's contagious, viral, and causes respiratory infections. The death rate is around 3%. We have to control the spread of the disease. Many stressors, ranging from nutrient deprivation and exercise to pathologies and infections, can activate the process of autophagy. It translates into self-eating and clearance of dysfunctional cell components as well as infections. Autophagy's role in immunity is called immunophagy. It functions in both the innate as well as the adaptive immune system by regulating thymic function, presentation of antigens, lymphocyte homeostasis, T-cell regulation, cytokine production, control of inflammation and survival. Autophagy plays a role in shaping immune system development, fueling the host's immune responses and directly controlling intracellular microbes as well as autonomous innate defense. The process of degrading foreign microbial invaders is called xenophagy. It describes the breakdown and degradation of bacteria by autophagy. Bacteria like Streptococcus pyogenes or pathogens such as M. tuberculosis, Salmonella and Listeria monocytogenes can be eliminated by autophagy. Autophagy can protect host cells against toxic products generated by pathogens such as Vibrio chlorella citrullicin, Bacillus anthracis lethal toxin, and H. pylori. That's a pretty positive thing, and it may provide protection against these infections. Unfortunately, as an evolutionary counter-strategy, some pathogens have evolved to block autophagic defense against them and hijack its mechanism for their own survival and growth. Viruses that escape or block autophagy include herpes virus, HIV-1, human cytomegalovirus, and Coxsackie virus B3, B4. Influenza A virus can also use autophagy to replicate itself. Several studies have shown that coronavirus infection induces autophagy. However, the pathway doesn't appear to be required for replicating the virus. So autophagy is probably acting as a cellular defense to the virus infection. Your body is just responding to the virus by trying to eliminate it with the involvement of autophagy. Autophagy works great in strengthening your immune system and preventing yourself from getting sick. But as you saw from these examples, it may not work all the time and it's actually maladaptive in some situations. But here are some situations of similar respiratory infections where autophagy is involved. Autophagy plays an essential role in the inflammatory response of the lung to infection and stress. It inhibits inflammation and mediates the response of leukocytes to infections. Defective autophagy leads to the accumulation of reactive oxygen species. Autophagy removes aggregated inflammatory structures, thus dampening the pro-inflammatory response. At baseline, autophagy may be critical for inhibiting inflammation and infection in the lung, but it can also damage lung epithelial cells if expressed excessively. Inhibiting autophagy causes lung inflammation in cystic fibrosis. Stimulating autophagy with rapamycin lowers lung inflammation and infection in cystic fibrosis. Autophagy eliminates infections and macrophages in the lung caused by cigarette smoke. Defective or deficient autophagy in the lung leads to the accumulation of autophagosomes, protein aggregates, dysfunctional mitochondria and bacteria, which promotes infections. Sufficient autophagy, on the other hand, prevents that and can decrease infection rates. Autophagy inhibits tuberculosis survival in infected macrophages. 
it's a defense mechanism against myobacterium tuberculosis. In other cases, tumorigenesis in tuberous sclerosis complex is autophagy dependent and inhibiting autophagy kills it off. I think that if your body catches a virus while it's still weak and while it's in its infancy, then autophagy can probably deal with it to a certain extent. But if you're already sick, then probably autophagy is not enough to deal with it. So you have to catch it before it lays eggs, so to say. If you're already pretty healthy and you have a strong immune system, then it's partly because of autophagy and at that point autophagy will also help you to maintain that resilience. However, if you're sick very frequently and you tend to have a weak immune system, then it's partly because of insufficient autophagy or defective autophagy. If you're already sick, then whether or not autophagy is going to help you depends on a particular disease and how severe it is. A mild infection can be probably eliminated quite rapidly if you catch it fast, but if you are severely sick, then autophagy could make things worse. Overall, I wouldn't rely on autophagy trying to save you from the coronavirus. You have to look at the other things that are more important, such as washing your hands, not traveling to China at the moment, <laughs> and not getting infected by other people, and not touching, you know, these public spaces like the staircase, the elevator buttons, and, you know, the public toilet, whatever it is. Just keep your immune system strong with things like taking vitamin D, using some adaptogens like chaga mushroom, and not getting sick and not catching the cold because if you if you are in a weakened state of immune system your immune system is weakened then you're also more prone to catching any other virus so this is the time this is not this is not the time to get sick and you have to kind of keep your immune system quite strong especially during these months of the year so in conclusion autophagy is involved in modulating inflammation lowering inflammation and modulating the immune system as well and fighting different pathogens and infections and eliminating them but at the same time it may not work all the time, so you shouldn't put all your bets on things like fasting or autophagy or whatever it is. If you want to know how to fully optimize fasting, nutrition, training, meal timing and food combining, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. But that's it for this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe and notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.